My name is Anna Stockwell and I'm 43 years old and talking about my TMS journey is not easy for me because I feel like I talked about it so much when I was going through it. I talked about it with everyone who would listen because I would always be looking for new information. I was constantly researching for something that would provide some answers for me. and. At one time, I would have given anything for someone to tell me that what I had was something that can be cured. So I'm sharing my experience because I want to give people hope. I want people to understand where I was and what I went through and that there is hope out there. When I tell people that reading a book that the great pain deception gave me back my life. I know that it sounds unbelievable. I know that it's difficult for people to understand that, that that's even possible, but it is. And I want people to be able to have that same experience. And in order for people to understand that it gave me back my life, that this book, the great pain deception gave me back my life, I know that people have to understand the kind of life that I had before I had TMS and also the, what I was experiencing during um, the most severe symptoms. My nightmare began in March of 2011. I believe I've had TMS my whole life. I had infections, eye infection when I was um, very young that would not get better and then I had really significant neck pain when I was uh, in my early 20s. But my chronic symptoms, the really debilitating symptoms started in March of 2011. Now before that I was super active. I was doing Bikram yoga every single day. I was working out um, on top of my Bikram yoga. I was doing weights and cardio and I would hike and I had a very active social life and I, I was very successful in my career and I have a great family. But it was like a perfect storm because I was such an intense personality. I approached everything with such obsessiveness. Everything had to be perfect right before March of 2011, I had a death in the family and it affected me so much. It was such a significant loss in my life that I had, I was having a very difficult time grieving. And then shortly after that, I lost my 17 year old cat, um, who was very, very special to me. And then I had some legal issues and some work-related stress. So when March happened and all the TMS symptoms started to appear, looking back, for me, it was very clear, like the perfect storm. Very slowly, I started losing faith in the medical profession. After the allergist and the eye doctors, and I saw an ear, nose, and throat doctor, um, I ended up with a neurologist uh, after seeing a couple of primary doctors who eventually, um, one of them ordered an MRI of my head and it came up clear after I started to develop really severe headaches. Now the headaches for me are the most difficult to talk about because my headaches lasted almost two years. So by the time that the headaches started to appear, I had the eye irritation, the dry eyes, I had sinus pressure, I had neck pain, lower back pain, and the headaches. For four months, I restricted myself from anything that was a potential migraine trigger. I was still working out, although not as much. And by the end of the year, after being on this restricted diet and it, nothing helping, I started to also develop joint pain in random parts of my body, in my wrists, in my elbows, in one of my knees. I was having hip pain. 
at this point, not only did I have all of these physical symptoms, but I also have debilitating anxiety. I started to panic. I started to become depressed. I just felt like my whole life was changing. I started researching naturopathic doctors. So by the end of the year, I was seeing a doctor who was doing alternative treatments. I was doing acupuncture and then a naturopath that did all these tests, saliva tests and urine tests and put me on $300 a month worth of supplements. So at this point, I was always looking for another doctor and I went to see a rheumatologist at Loma Linda Medical Center. By that time, I had a file with all of my tests, blood tests, endless. My neurologist did every single blood test under the sun trying to come up for some kind of autoimmune disease. My ANA was high, and so he thought that perhaps it was an autoimmune disease. But he ran several tests for several different ones, and they would come up um, negative for lupus and, and, and others similar to lupus. So by the time I saw the rheumatologist, I had a really thick file. And I gave her my file, and she just flipped through the pages and immediately told me that I had fibromyalgia. I had researched fibromyalgia, and the only thing that I came across and in that moment when I heard that, I, everything that I came across was that there was no cure for that. So when she told me that, I just, I didn't want to believe that. I didn't want to believe that I had fibromyalgia. I had thought about the possibility that I had fibromyalgia for many months. And when she said that, it was... It was just confirmation that that my worst that were my worst fear would come true. That what I was experiencing was something that I was going to experience for the rest of my life. By that time, I was pretty much dead. I couldn't go to another doctor. I had given up faith in the medical profession. I had seen 26 doctors by that time, rheumatologists, neurologists, internists, dermatologists, eye doctors. I had seen so many of them that I just could not do that to myself anymore. The minute that they said that I had, I didn't have vasculitis, I remember walking out of UCLA and I just made the decision right there and then that I was going to figure this out on my own. It's unbelievable to me to think that in all of my research, I didn't come across anything regarding TMS. It's just unbelievable. I feel like for me, when I started finally learning about it, it was meant to be. And my husband was the one that heard about it and immediately called me at work. I had already been doing the Chinese medicine for a few months and I was giving up hope and I was still not getting better. And when he called me up and told me about it, Immediately I got on the computer like I did all the other times. And when I started learning about TMS, it was the only thing that made sense. There were so many times when I would sit in my doctor's office and tell him about my pain. And I know it sounded like I was going crazy. I know that when I would tell him about how my headaches moved, how the pain sometimes was the back of my head and sometimes it was in my front of the front of my head and that sometimes was in one side when I would tell him that I would have a new symptom. I know it sounded crazy to him. I know what I sounded like. 
he never told me that I was crazy. He was always very empathetic, but TMS was the only thing that made sense. That was it. That was the answer to everything that I was wondering about. And so immediately I started to feel better as I started to research and learn about it. But I wasn't getting better after a couple of months. I knew that it was TMS. But when I came across the great pain deception, that's when my whole world changed. It was almost instantly. When I started reading that book and I started to read about Stephen's journey, that was exactly what I was going through. And I realized the mistakes that I was making. I was approaching my healing like I, I approached everything else in my life with the same intensity, with the same determination. I wanted to get better fast. And I was counting the days and, and I was, I was beating myself up if I didn't feel any better. And when I read his book, that's when I started to understand all the things that I was doing wrong. And, and it just all clicked. That was the explanation for me for everything that I was experiencing, why I started to develop all these new symptoms, why I got so sick, how it all spun out of control. And by the time that I was reading that book, I had given up yoga. I had not done yoga for two years. I had not worked out for close to a year. I was on a restricted diet where I was not eating any sugar, drinking any caffeine or alcohol, no wheat, no gluten. I was, I had lost 20 pounds. I had no life. I couldn't go out anywhere because I had to pack my, my lunch. Everything was organic. I cooked everything from scratch. So when I came across the book, I didn't have a life. There was no life. I, everything that I had loved, everything that I had known, everything was gone. I remember there were times when I would look at myself in the mirror and I didn't even recognize myself anymore. I would look at myself and I'd say, who are you? How did you get here? I was so thin, I was so frail, and my life was different. I didn't want to be around anyone because I was miserable and in pain, and I didn't want to expose people to that. So I didn't see my friends. The only thing I had was my pain. That's the only thing I knew my pain and my suffering were the were the only thing I had. So when I came across the great pain deception, it was like a miracle to me because it was giving me back my life. It was offering me my life back. I had already convince myself that if they found something that was wrong with me that I just wanted it to be something that could be treated. I never imagined that what I had could be something that would eventually go away. So reading his book and learning about his experience, I could relate to every single moment of his journey. And it just all made sense to me. When I started reading The Great Pain Deception, I got better within a couple of days, almost by 50%. And eventually there were months when I would have no pain. And then I would start to notice when my pain would resurface and had a lot to do with what was going on and how I was coping with my emotional state and I started to work out and I started to get my life back and I gave up all my diet restrictions and I was in a lot of pain when I started to work out and I knew I knew that I had to go back to 
doing yoga, what I love, but I feared that the most. And I did. And I started to go first a couple of times a week and then eventually almost every day. And I would tell myself that I was going to have no pain. And when the pain would show up, I would yell at myself and say, it's not going to conquer me. And it wouldn't. And sometimes only by saying that, the pain would disappear. That's when I knew that I had TMS. It was confirmed. There was no doubt. I didn't fear it anymore. I didn't have any expectations. I started to give those up. My battle has been something that has taught me a lot about myself and how I cope with certain things. But I realized that my doctors were all wrong. I didn't have fibromyalgia. I didn't have chronic fatigue syndrome. I didn't have Epstein-Barr. I didn't have vasculitis. I didn't have migraine headaches. I didn't have all of these conditions that they told me. They were all wrong. They were all wrong. I had TMS. And today, I have my life back. I eat whatever I want, and I work out, not as much as I used to, um, because I don't want to, <laughs> but I work out some every day still, but I do Bikram yoga three days a week, not every day, because I realized that it was a huge time commitment, and I don't want to be obsessive about everything that I do, um, but I'm healthy. I gained back my 20 pounds that I lost, and I... I am very optimistic. I spend a lot of time meditating and I journal a lot and I'm very well aware of my feelings and my personality and how that affects my well-being. I am very content and I appreciate so many things in my life so much more than I used to. I don't take anything for granted. I think that I'm very blessed and learning about TMS and reading The Great Pain Deception and Stephen's journey and be him being able to share that with everyone. For me, it was a miracle. I just can't put it any other way because I couldn't imagine that I would be where I am right now after suffering as long as I did with as many things as I was suffering with. So I hope this helps someone. I hope that you just allow yourself an opportunity to believe that you can get better because you absolutely can. And I'm sure that if you've tried everything, that you're going to be open to the possibility of being 100% healed. And I hope this is helpful. So I think I'm finished. I don't know. I can't think of anything else to say. But I hope that my story helps someone so that they can experience the joy of coming out the other side of TMS. So I think that's it. When I came across the book, I didn't have a life. There was no life. For me, it was a miracle. I realized that my doctors were all wrong. I didn't have fibromyalgia. I didn't have chronic fatigue syndrome. I didn't have Epstein-Barr. I didn't have vasculitis. I didn't have migraine headaches. I didn't have all of these conditions that they told me. They were all wrong. They were all wrong. I had TMS. And today, I have my life back.